My name is David Herzog. I'm an associate professor of journalism, and I also am the academic advisor to the National Institute for Computer Assisted Reporting. We did stories all the time that relied on data and documents that we got under um, open records request in Rhode Island. The Providence Journal uh, is very much uh, a strong investigative newspaper, and there's a culture of, uh, that's that where the reporters are really encouraged to not only talk to people, but also to get documents, uh, get data, and bring that into their stories. Uh, so a good example of, of that is one, we were do, uh, covering uh, the ongoing uh, corruption investigation um, into the mayor at the time. Uh, and one of the things we were looking at is we were looking at uh, tax breaks that were being given to uh, people who, uh, who had allegedly uh, paid bribes to people who were on the tax board. And so what, uh, we got a database of all the, uh, of all the tax assessments, uh, database of all the tax collections, and we were able to use that on an ongoing basis to uh, help elevate the story and, and help uh, you know, identify people who were not clearly identified in court documents uh, as paying bribes. We were able to figure out who they were and, and actually name them then. Uh, I think the outcome of that was we were we were really able to do uh, tell uh, you know more a fuller story and um, really identify the participants. Uh, otherwise, it, it would just be uh, vague information that was in there at the time. In terms of the importance of FOIA and open government to journalism, it's one of those things that's 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 foundational. If you don't have open government, if you don't have access to information you don't have the raw material that you need to do good, high-quality public service journalism. Um, because otherwise, you're, you're just uh, relying on kind of source-based journalism where you're asking people, um, you know, people in positions of power to give you their input on things. Or you know, you're asking pe uh, people who are not in power about things. And so it's really important for journalists to have access to information so they can figure out uh, what's really going on. Uh, so they can ask better questions when they go to interview people or uh, you know, people who are in power. I think there are some things that, that uh, journalists can do to file uh, effective FOI requests. Um, you know, one thing is to try to avoid it in the first, first place if you can, uh, simply because if you can get something from a source, it's always better to do that than to go through an official process. Um, you know, I found that I, I've been, I was able to, on a number of occasions, get, get data and documents from sources uh, without having to go through that official request. And that's always the best way if you can, if you can stay out of that. Um, however, there are times when you really need to file that request. And, you know, it, you have to really be, uh, you have to be assertive, you have to be, uh, you have to be polite, but know what your rights are and not back down from that. Um, one thing that's really key as a, as a young journalist is to uh, really know what your state open records law says. Um, get a copy of it, carry it around with you, uh, bookmark it on you know on your browser. You know it's, you've got to know where that is. So when somebody in a government agency tells you we can't give you the data because this, um, you can act, you can go and you can then look look it up and make sure that they're not lying to you um, or they're they're not. Uh, misinterpreting the law, so it's so it's you really you really have to become an expert in, in the open records law, and become comfortable standing up to people in government uh, agencies and, and asserting yourself. I think a lot of times citizens can feel intimidated by uh, going in and getting information from a public office. Um, you know, I know I know that there are there are times when journalists will ask for information and people in positions of power in government agencies will say no and uh, shut down, try to shut down access to that information, even when, when that information is clearly public. And professionally, uh, we as journalists need to respond to that um, by, by coming back and saying, well, no, you can't do that, and, and here's why. I think citizens need to do that, too, um, because I think a lot of times people in, in, um, in, in power will, will try and block access to information. Um, be, and citizens will walk away, which, which is a shame because, you know, really the information uh, belongs to everybody, not just to journalists, not just to people who are savvy about filing and following up on um, open records requests, but, you know, this, this is information that belongs to the people. 
Well, the Open Missouri Project, that's, that's intended to help give uh, journalists and citizens uh, more of an insight to what government agencies are collecting here in the state. Um, the whole purpose of Open Missouri is to serve as a platform uh, where people can go and learn about uh, databases, uh, computer files that government agencies are compiling, uh, but not necessarily telling you about. So uh, it's a place where that, that, en that encourages people to go there and learn more about uh, what the agencies are collecting. One of the great, one of the things that, one of the goals I had for Open Missouri uh, when I went into the project was to create something that could serve as a model for groups in other states. Um, and so what we've done is uh, we've made our avail software available as an open source project so um, developers in other states can grab the project and deploy it on the website. Uh, the nice thing too is they can also uh, contribute code so they can enhance the project and make it sp work specifically for their own needs. Uh, so, so we're really hoping that groups in, in other uh, states um, tap into that resource.